Welcome back to Community Matters. We've been talking about collaborative divorce. Now we'll meet someone who helps couples save their marriage. Licensed clinical social worker and therapist James McCracken. Welcome to the show, James. Thanks, Bill. You can save a marriage. Is it possible when it gets to a point where two people have decided to separate? Absolutely. Yes. What are some of the reasons? Uh, because, gosh, I can think of so many reasons, but they seem so insurmountable, whether it be infidelity or finances. Uh, I mean, you, you probably hear it all. How do you put that back together? Well, so, Bill, couples come in with a variety of issues. It can be anything from fights about finances, parenting, sex, infidelity, uh, you name it. If, if you want to uh, taste your spouse's cooking or not, um, couples come in with all this stuff. And uh, what we see is that typically the conflict pattern gets unmanaged for usually six to seven years before folks come in to therapy, if they do at all. And what we know now is that using scientifically validated approaches to couples therapy, 90% of the time we can help couples resolve their distress pretty significantly and help them bring them back from the brink of separation or divorce. Wow. I mean, that's, uh, that's a pretty spectacular figure for folks who might be in that position right now. Mm -hmm. the, um, how do you get to two individuals who, and there always seems to be, and I, you tell me if I'm right, wrong or right about this, there always seems to be one who wants out maybe more than the other one does, or there's one who bl is blaming another more than the other. You know what I'm trying to say here? There seems mm -hmm. to be a, a, bad, a bad one, a good one. How do you right. put that together? So in what, what we know now about conflicts and from the research about marriage and about couples therapy, about how we actually change these situations, what happens most of the time is one partner in a conflict typically looks like they're um, angry, they become critical, blaming, more pursuing. And there's another partner in the conflict that tends to look sort of cold, aloof, numb, and they tend to withdraw. And uh, when people come in for couples therapy, one of the partners is usually in a place where they're really wanting to save the mm -hmm. marriage, uh, and the other partner may not be so sure about it because either they've been hurt or maybe they're afraid that if they jump into this that uh, they're going to find out that they're wrong or that this whole relationship has been wrong. And what we see is that when partners do enter the blaming stance or the withdrawn stance is that they're accidentally reinforcing each other. So in a, a cartoonish vision what that looks like is someone uh, in the kitchen holding up a rolling pin and, and yelling at the top of their lungs and the other partner is sitting behind a newspaper calm and cool at the table. And most of the time what's happening is that partner who is critical and angry and blaming What's going on in them is they're saying, hey, I need you to listen to me. I really need to get through to you. I don't understand this. I'm all alone here. But it's coming out in a way that's critical and angry. And the partner who's withdrawing, what's happening in them is they're saying to themselves, I'm not getting any of this right. I'm not sure that I can come through for you. I feel so inadequate. I feel like maybe my needs don't matter. And so they withdraw in that moment. But then the critical partner winds up hearing the, and seeing the withdrawal in a way that's reinforcing the way they're thinking about this. Here I am, I'm alone, they're not listening to me, they're not here, and so then they get louder, and then the withdrawn partner hears that as, I'm really not getting this right, I've gotta sink back further, or maybe they go around and around and around like this in this infinity loop until either the partner who's blaming and pursuing throws their hands up and says, I can't do this anymore, or the partner who is uh, withdrawing explodes in a yeah. defense. It seems as though what you're saying, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that oftentimes there's this underlying uh, pattern that has developed over years. So even though there might be something that trips that said I've had enough, whether it be infidelity or whatever it might be, mm -hmm. what you're telling me is there's something much more uh, uh, deeper than that. Yes, absolutely. These dynamics in couple relationships, while, like we were saying, uh, couples come in with any number of issues, and while it looks like maybe it's an incompatibility of personalities and that these issues are bringing it out, or maybe there's been some huge hurt around a betrayal like an affair or a hidden addiction that was discovered or um, any number of other betrayals, what happens when couples get into these conflicts 
is the patterns are revealing that the fight is really about connection. It's about these underlying questions of, are you there for me? Do I matter to you? When I call, will you come? Can I reach you? Are you engaged with me? Can I engage with you? And so when we start to look at those questions in the fights, we can start to make sense of each partner's feelings, the way they think and the way they act, and it starts to make a whole lot more sense. We can cool the situation down. That's interesting. It, does there have to be an underlying, from both parties, desire to save the marriage? And I, oftentimes I think of kids, for instance. Mm. Maybe, maybe that's a motivator, or, or doesn't it matter? Because when you talk about 90%, that's a high success rate of at least getting the couples back to, uh, away, backing away from divorce and separation. Mm -hmm. So, can you do that with someone who's don't want anything to do with it, and the, and they're there because the partner has, you know, basically dragged them to the office? Well, there does need to be uh, some degree of buy-in by both partners. Um, so this does happen where we have couples that come in where one partner is leaning out pretty heavily and the other one's leaning in pretty strongly, yeah. um, and. Sometimes that needs to be delineated, that if, let's say the partner who's leaning out has totally checked out of the marriage, they've already gotten attorneys, um, they're saying they really don't want to try this, they don't want to open themselves up to being hurt anymore, or maybe they're actively involved in an affair or some sort of addictive behavior that the other partner doesn't approve of. Um, in those situations, couples therapy may not be the best idea. but. If a partner is saying, um, you know, I'm not sure about this, I am leaning out of the relationship, but I'm willing to give it a shot, uh, we believe that it's worthwhile to take a look at the patterns to see if maybe the person's leaning out because they're feeling powerless in the situation that they don't know that they can impact their marriage in a positive way. As a therapist, we don't have a lot of time left. Do you see the progress from session to session to session? And how long does it normally take? For folks who, who want to go through this process? So using the approach that I'm trained in, which is called Emotionally Focused Therapy, or EFT for short, uh, we see typically for moderately distressed couples, 8 to 15 sessions, you can get significant change. And that's that 90% I was talking wow. to you about, that would be significant change. But in the studies on EFT, 75% of couples who complete a course go to complete recovery. For couples who have more distress, where maybe there's been a history of a trauma like domestic violence, or maybe one partner has uh, something like post-traumatic stress disorder or a serious mental illness, or if there's been an affair, uh, this can take longer. And what I tell couples in those situations is, you're going to have to invest in the relationship. This could take maybe a year, maybe longer. But it's possible. Absolutely. And that's the good news. How, how do folks get a hold of you? Uh, so to look at uh, my services, they can go to jamesmccrackenlcsw.com. But to find other emotionally focused therapists throughout the state of North Carolina and in South Carolina, they can go to carolinaeft.com. Awesome. James, thank you so much for being here. Thanks I for having me. I appreciate it. In fact, thank you to all of our guests and for you for joining us. And please visit our website at raleighcw.com and myrdctv.com to see more episodes of the show. I'm Bill LeMay. Thank you for watching Community Matters, and we'll see you next week.